Every image of a dancer requires an active imagination to approximate the real dancer. The back must be imagined from the front sculpted in stone. The painted image must be made to move. Girl made of gold is set in a time when the dancing body, in most cases, is a Devadasi's, and even now we can sense the camera's erotic fascination with her. When the image is of a young girl, we must confront what lies behind that too mature and knowing gaze. This footage, shot by British Pathé in the 1920s, shows the earliest available moving images of two Devadasis in the court of the Maharaja of Baroda. They are dancing the Alaripu, which remains part of the repertoire of Bharatanatyam on stage today. But in the interim, almost everything else has changed. The quality of movement, the costumes, the musical instruments for accompaniment, the place of the musicians on stage. Before film had established itself as an art form, it simply took what it wanted from the theatre and dance of the time. The Devadasi here performs a popular padam in just the manner she might have performed it had the camera not been there. Real life Devadasi and filmic persona of Devadasi merge in T.R. Rajakumari, the first dream girl of Tamil cinema. In costume, staging, and filmic conventions, we can trace the beginning of a new idiom. The moment where she blows a kiss was considered very daring at the time. T.R. Rajakumari moved beyond her Devadasi dance training. With hybrid music, hybrid costume, hybrid movements, creating a new but equally enticing art form. The finale uses 400 dancers and took months to rehearse and shoot with movements drawn from Kathakali and the Kandian dance of Sri Lanka.
The tradition of film dance begins here, with conventions and rules which hold true in Indian cinema even today. These are the images that inspired me to imagine Kanaka's journey from the confines of temple and tradition. The sequel, The Coral Princess, is set in the world of early Tamil cinema, where Devadasis played a pivotal role. 